was the night before Festivus when up in the attic, a grown man was screaming, maybe something dogmatic. He was prepping his gripes to skewer his mother and training his body to beat up his brother. The next day encompassed his yearly festivities. He would finally break down their unearned civility. The pole and the clock had been set up with care, and his father never told them why they were there. He usually lost the feats of strength with the clatter. His brother could pin him without a blood spatter. His parents always dragged out the airing of grievances, ranting and raving through their unending weaknesses. You asshole, you fart face, you dipshit and loser, you dummy, you blockhead, you child abuser. So Festivus has always gone in their home, making him wonder if he had Stockholm Syndrome. So he practiced that night for tomorrow's pinnacle, when he would shout for no reason, It's a Festivus Miracle! Hello everyone, you're listening to Tristeropod, episode 9, our holiday special. Happy Festivus, Dorian. How you doing? Hi, happy Festivus to the rest of us. Right. Um, well, just by the way, yeah, David Colma and Dorian Wallace were composers. We talk about music and politics and we're leftists and yeah. So, all that shit. And Dorian wanted well, so, to do a holiday special. So Yeah, just, just uh, before we get into that, just to get it out of the way, we are speaking... Uh, we recorded this the day after the impeachment of Donald Trump, um, which, uh, how do you feel about that, David? I personally really don't care about it. I um, think it's a significant moment in history, oh, and sure. I think the man deserves to get impeached, but yeah. uh, but um, I don't think it's going to... I, I think it's basically really solidifying that we're going to have a Donald Trump victory in 2020. Yeah. Yeah, I think it makes it more likely. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, I care about as much about this as I care about, I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to let that sentence not be done. So, great. Yeah, great. Whatever. Moving on. <laughs> cool. So, uh, <sighs> we were going to start off uh, by maybe talking about some holiday music. Um, so, I guess, David, what's your favorite holiday song? My favorite holiday song? I don't think I have favorites of those. I, well, you know, it's funny is that I, when I was a kid, the, uh, the thing that sort of the most, my earliest sort of memory of being a musician is being like five years old and learning the piano and forcing my parents and family to stand around me as I was at the little piano thing. We, we had an electric piano. And I mm. would play the little simple arrangements of Christmas tunes from like a little book, and I made them all sing along. Okay. So, so it's um, so my musicianship is bound up with uh, doing Christmas music, um, but you know, I've always liked it in most of it, I should say. But I don't know if I would have a favorite one. I mean, yeah. You know, I remember being in high school and liking singing Christmas carols. I was in the chamber choir for two mm-hmm. years which is like a extracurricular or smaller ad- advanced choir and we would go around doing caroling one night you know every year i'm sure they still do that so <clears throat> yeah no i you know no i just having to learn all the bass parts so i never got to sing mm-hmm. the tune mm. <laughs> were you a bass in high school choir yeah 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 okay. well, I'm, I'm a baritone so it's yeah yeah so it was it was i had to spend a lot of time learning how to sing low g's and f's i uh, see uh right but i hadn't i didn't have much trouble with the upper range yeah 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 men's voices tend to go up as they get older oh i didn't well, realize like that. at least in that 20 in the in their 20s okay, okay men's voices tend to go up at least that's that's what i understand it so actually i'm a little i have a little more easier singing higher now than i did when i was mm. in high school but it means that my low range sucks. But it's been always yeah. been true. Um, anyway, yeah, so, I, I was a, you? I was a tenor uh, back in the day. Um, I mean, I guess I still am a tenor, uh, but I was always in the tenor section. Well, your well, your voice is higher than mine. Yeah, yeah. I exactly. mean, we're not that far apart, but yeah. Right. Like if we were going to sing together, you would sing the higher part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So I guess if I had to pick a favorite Christmas song or holiday song sure i actually like the christmas song chestnuts roasting on an open fire oh yeah sure uh that's actually the uh the jazz piano player in me um loves that song right Right. just because um 
the chord progression is completely uh, ridiculous. It's it's one of the few songs that if you don't really know it, uh, it's it's hard to figure out just by ear on the spot. Like you know, like Jingle Bells or Frosty the Snowman. Like I don't need to think about it at all. Uh, sure. You know, it's like it's like oh we're doing it in E flat. Oh we're doing it in G. You know, it's like it'll it. There's no like uh mind fuck that happens whereas the christmas song has a lot of uh like mode mixture and a lot of um weird little phrases uh that just you know go out of the key and then come back to another key yeah um mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's a, it wanders it in, does uh, in very purposeful fashion yeah right oh, yeah, lots yeah. of lots of crazy seventh chords you wouldn't hear in any other context in a christmas music yeah yeah right well um I'm actually looking. Uh, it's not the simplicity of uh, Silent Night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is one of those things I actually, that's one of the first pieces I have students analyze when I teach theory classes. As I pull out Silent Night, I give them sheet music, we sing through it, and we anal- when we're having to actually analyze harmonies, that's one of, one of the first things I get them to do. Wow. Well, like, you know, the the one thing I find interesting, so, you know, so you've got your C major goes to a D minor and then an E minor, mm-hmm. uh, and then I usually do a turnaround, uh, like a D to a G, but then it's C to C7, F, mm-hmm. this all makes sense, but then you go to a B flat Dom 7, mm, nice. and then you go to an A minor chord, oh. and then an F minor chord, mm-hmm. and then a C, a B7 to an A, B flat, G or D seven G seven. Yeah. Okay. So we're and then back to back to C. Right. Um, well. Okay. So that's some. Um, for those of you who have no effing idea what what the hell any of that means, the in the the last mid mid third of that is something that you you're not used to doing in a row. That kind of thing very often. It's slip slidey rather than very right. straightforward. Right. Right. So, right. Yeah, no, the it goes. You said B flat and then A. Mm-hmm. That's weird. It is weird. Well, and, it, and like, then it, it gets makes it, sense. It, it wanders around to an F minor chord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's okay. the one that's the trippiest for me. Right. Because uh, it it literally just changes keys for a chord. What um, what what words are happening when that happens? Oh, let's see. Um, Come on, come on, come on. So, uh, Yuletide, carols. Carols is the F minor chord. Being mm-hmm. sung by a choir. What's on the choir song? Choir. Uh, B7. Yeah, okay. Um, even though I often do an F sharp half dom to a B7. Well, of course you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Right, we're, we're doing some very inside baseball right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just so you know, the Dorian loves half diminished seventh chords. Oh, I sure do. And 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 the op, and when you're doing when you're in a jazz style, um, is very when you have a dominant seventh chord that comes from that's not expected, preceding it by the two, that would be half to half diminished seven in front of it would be is a, is a way to make is a way to make a half diminished seventh chord happen in a way, that is um, is pungent but also ends up doing something logical sounding. So. Yeah, I just realized that um, this chord progression that's written in this particular chart I'm looking at, mm-hmm. so it goes uh, B7 to an E major, mm-hmm. but I realize that I play this very differently because it goes B7 to E major and then B flat to G, and the way I actually play it is I go B7 to E major to F minor to B flat, and then I go to E flat, and then D sus D7 G something and then to C. Uh, yeah, you, do you want to play that really quickly? So you said B flat. What's this? So, so do so uh, sung by a choir. Go to B seven. B seven. Okay. And then go to E major and folks dressed and then go to F minor to B flat seven dressed up like Eska. So and then E flat Mo's. And then do a D sus. No, yeah, that's. And then go to a, a G anything. Every. 
Nobody knows. Yeah. It's just super hip, man. The C6 doesn't work. Yeah. Do it. You got added six chord. It's, it's you're doing too many seventh chords to do a C. C you, you could end on that chord, but you wouldn't want to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there we you go, everybody. There's the there's the the finer points of harmonic practice in certain kinds of uh, jazzy <laughs> Christmas songs. Yeah. Um, well, it's funny because um, you know. I, I had a conversation with, uh, well, it, 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 it's, it's, it's funny because um, we were talking about just how memorable uh, some of these songs are. And, you know, they're, it, it's, it's very strange. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an atheist and I'm also an anti-capitalist. And just, it's, it's bizarre how much I love Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Like, I have no religious like connection to it. Other, I mean, beyond beyond my family is a religious family and um, all of that. But you know, I personally have no connection to the religion. And then I actually despise commercialism and 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 uh, you know, spend 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 to show how much you love your family. But I'll be honest, man. I I love the Christmas specials and I love the music. <laughs> like I really love the trees and all that stuff. Yeah, um, well, that's that's because most of it doesn't have anything to do with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you know, this you know, Christmas is a is a secular holiday turned into a religious holiday mm. in order to capitalize on the kinds of uh, solstice festivals, right? Mm -hmm. So all the things that like you know. The fucking tree has nothing to do with Jesus, you know. Right. It's about it has to do with the Northern European stuff, you know. Um, the the uh, the people that are known as the barbarians when the when the, there was a Roman Empire. Um, so, um, yeah, I uh, yeah no I I agree with you. So I I I have a similar feeling is. The one thing I miss from so uh, by choosing not to uh, give any shit about any kind of God, um, the one thing I miss about church is the singing. I miss the music. I miss hymns, mm -hmm. and specifically Christmas hymns. Right, so it's like carols, mm -hmm. and because uh, I grew up in a Lutheran church where. You know, the people, the, you know, it wasn't a very big one, like 100 people or something. Maybe not even that many, probably less than that now. Um, but, you know, the people, like in, a, in a, a, um, a Lutheran church, people know the parts and the hymnals have all the four parts in them. Mm -hmm. So you'd be standing around and people sing the parts. Hmm. It's really nice. I mean, communal, communal four-part singing is a joy in and of itself that we only really have a couple of contexts for, and most people don't experience either of them. Hmm. You know, like a church or um, or like, you know, an amateur choir in school, right? And mm -hmm. how many people want to do that? I mean, you know, as a music teacher, how many students that are musicians that I teach who've never, who seem to have never sung a day in their life? You know, it's just, you know, <clears throat> I just can't imagine what it's like for the people who don't want to go become a musician or don't think they should go get a music degree. What their mm -hmm. what their interaction with singing is because they didn't like I grew up singing all the time because of my mm -hmm. own particular family background that is very mm -hmm. much installed in some sort of religious practice. Although mm -hmm. my 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 parents tend to be my my parents um, religious stuff ends up being up more on the liberal spectrum, so that it's you know. More about metaphorical uses of of um, the Bible rather than any kind of literal interpretation. Actually, they find mm -hmm. that as loathsome as I do. Usually, the uh, literal interpretation of the Bible. So, right. I, I remember uh, your father is the type that that has problems with the current pope. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah. He thinks he thinks every pope is a piece of shit. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, it's because they're it's because he's the pope, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's just like this idea that somehow we're going to get like this new pope is somehow the more the most recent one I should say he's not the new pope anymore um, that he's going to somehow reform the church it's like but he's the pope they don't pick somebody to be the pope because they're going to like make they're going to modernize the church 
I mean, if anything, it's just PR. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, and just think about it. In the Western world, where where was per, uh, PR born? Probably the Catholic Church. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sure so, was. And, and and what what is PR a euphemism for? Propaganda. Okay, so, uh, so it's um, so yeah, so wow. so there you go. There's there's the political tinge on it. Um, wow. Yeah, no, it's you know, it's like so you know, as much as I miss it, I don't I don't you know, I'm I'm I I would much rather not be in a church on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's like you know, I can always, I can always sing myself. I'm fine. <laughs> and you know, then there's always like the DSA chorus that you do to, to be able to sing together communally. Yeah. Right. Right. Not that I do anything like that. But yeah, no, I just there's there's a lot of wonderful music. So here's the deal: the reason that, in a certain sense, the reason there's so much good Christmas music is because there's been two thousand years of trying to figure that out. Mm-hmm. Probably not that long, maybe just a thousand years, but yeah, that's long enough, right? I Whereas, mean, uh, you know, yeah, if yeah. You, if you try to imagine music for a different holiday, like for example, Festivus, you know, it's it takes a long time to build up a catalog. That's true, right? So, well, th- there's uh there's, I mean, I found a secular solstice Christmas book. Oh, Somebody nice. had gone out to make an entire uh, song book and. They're they're really bad songs. <laughs> well, of course they are. Uh, yeah, it, it's you know, um, it's well, just like staying, man, you know. Well, staying on the on the Catholic theme. Mm. So in the nineteen six, so you're not Catholic, right? No, no, you, no, you no, didn't no, grow up Catholic. Methodist. No, right. I was Methodist. Yeah. Methodist. Yeah. So, 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 are you aware that the Catholic Church in the nineteen, I think it was in the sixties, that they completely reformed how they did. Um, worship music no yeah they they decided so up until then they did gregorian chant in church and all of the worship services were in latin no matter where you were so they decided to make it so that catholic masses now could be done in the local language Hmm. and guess what that meant you had to completely come up with new music Right, they opened up what kind of music that could be performed. I mean, they had music other than the ch- the chants, but everything was based around the chant. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. but since you're not going to be stuck with the Latin, you have to come up with all this new music, which means that if you go to a, a contemporary, you know, the the more modern-ish uh, Catholic services, they only have about forty years worth of music to perform on any given Sunday, which is why most of the music at those things is. And I mean, like, just not very good at all. I mean, I'm an oboe player, so I've sat and I've played in a lot of different church services over the years. Mm-hmm. And Catholic worship service music is just some of the, it's just not very good. I mean, there's some good music out there. I mean, there are some people who do, who take writing um, worship music seriously and they can mm-hmm. write some good stuff. But it, you, you know, there isn't a thousand years of music to call upon. <laughs> I mean, that's right. so it's that, I mean, that's just the nature of this kind of thing. So mm-hmm. now keep in mind, I support them doing the, 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 in the language of the people. Yeah. People should know what's going on. I mean, it was all about opening up the church. So it was a good mm-hmm. thing in the end, but it just, it had a, a negative sort of unexpected consequence of, oh shit, now we have to like write all this music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you end up with you end up with really weird things that happen, but that's normal. It's normal stuff. Anyway, uh, so there's your there's your uh, bullshit uh, music professor mostly right information of the day, and <laughs> with with misunderstandings and confusions thrown in. I don't know what those are. That's that's why they're confusions. So, yeah. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's, you know, fuck the Catholic Church. Okay, so. <clears throat> <laughs> so, I'm just kind of looking through. I typed in a Wikipedia article uh, of Christmas controversies. It's what oh, happened when I looked up uh, War on Christmas. Ooh. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Um, Sextus Julius Africanus, a historian of the second century, maintained that Jesus of Nazareth was conceived on 25 March which the Christian Church came to celebrate as the Feast of Annunciation. 
Mm-hmm. With the term of pregnancy being nine months, Sextus Julius Africanus held that Jesus was born on 25 December, which the Western Christmas Church established as Christmas. Okay, great. Recorded in Sextus Julius's Africanus chron- Chronographia, this thesis is corroborated by an interpretation of Gospel of Luke that places the appearance of Gabriel to Zechariah on the observance of Yom Kippur that occurs around October, as the worshiper praying outside of the temple and not within, and for the only priest could enter the temple at the time to conduct the proper rituals, because Jesus was six months younger than his cousin, John the Baptist. Jesus was conceived in March and born in late December. Um, okay, so yeah, this oh, is just, yeah, this is just Bullshit. date stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to jump to the more fun stuff. 20th century, here we go. You mean it's uh, not fun why Christmas is when it is? <laughs> so, uh, just so you know, everybody, we have no fucking idea when Jesus was born. Um, mm-hmm. I should even say, we don't even know if Jesus was real. Okay, moving mm-hmm, on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, present day controversy. Let's start with the United States. The expression, the war on Christmas, was used in the media to denote, to denote Christmas-related controversies. The term gained notability due, to, due in part to its, u- its use by conservative commentators, such as, are you ready, Peter Brimelow and B- Bill O'Reilly, beginning oh, in the boy. early 2000s. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the... <laughs> You're enjoying the Sorry. dog barks, by the way? Yes, I, I love the dog. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, those are my next-door neighbor's dogs. They yeah, okay. They just uh, they scream, and they scream. Great. And they scream. Yeah. Hey! 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 Yeah, they're All right, still cool. going. So, the claim of Bremelo, O'Reilly, and others was that any specific mention of the term Christmas or its religious aspects were becoming increasingly censored, avoided, or discouraged by a number of advertisers, retailers, government, prominently schools, and other public and secular organizations. In the United States and Canada, where the use of the term holidays is most prevalent, opponents have denounced its usage and avoidance of using the term Christmas as being politically correct. Jeff Schweitzer, a commentator for the Huffington Post, addressed the position on commentators such as O'Reilly, stating that there is no war on Christmas, the idea is absurd at every level, those who object to being forced to celebrate another's religion are drowning in Christmas in sea of Christianity, dominating all aspects of social life. An 80% majority can claim victimhood only with an extraordinary flight from reality. I agree with this statement, by the way. Um, Heather Long, an American colonist for The Guardian, addressed the politically correct question in America over use of the term holidays, writing, People who are clearly celebrating Christmas in their homes tend to be conflicted about what to say in the workplace or at school. No Mm -hmm. one wants to offend anyone or make assumptions about people's religious beliefs, especially at work. Yeah. Christmas Day is recognized as an official federal holiday by the United States government. The, the only ACLU one to, be, to do so, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The ACLU argues that government-funded displays on Christmas imagery and traditions violate the U.S. Constitution, specifically the First Amendment, which prohibits the establishment by Congress of a national religion. On the other hand, the Alliance Defending Freedom shocking, a Christian advocacy organization, believes that Christmas displays are consistent with the First Amendment, as well as court rulings that have repeatedly upheld accommodationalism. Uh, Accommodationism, sorry. The debate over whether religious displays should be placed within public schools, courthouses, and other government buildings has been heated in recent years. In some cases, popular aspects of Christmas, such as Christmas trees, lights, and decorating, are seen prominently are still prominently showcased, but are associated with unspecified holidays rather than with Christmas. The controversy also includes I, I, I can't believe this is a word controversy like being used, but all right. The controversy also includes objections to policies that prohibit government or schools from forcing unwilling participants to take part in Christmas ceremonies. In other words, 
In other cases, the Christmas tree, as well as nativity scenes, have not been permitted to, uh, to be displayed in public settings altogether. Also, several U.S. chain retailers, such as Walmart, Macy's, and Sears, have experimented with greeting, car greeting their customers with Happy Holidays, or Seasons Greetings, rather than Merry Christmas. Supreme Court rulings, oh my god, starting with Lynch v. Donnelly in 1984, have permitted religious themes in government-funded Christmas displays that had legitimate secular purposes. Since these rulings have been splintered and have left governments uncertain of their limits, many such displays have included secular elements such as reindeer, snowmen, and elves, along with the religious elements. Other court cases have brought up additional ideas as the inclusion of Christmas carols in public school performances, but none of these cases have reached the Supreme Court. A controversy regarding these issues arose in 2002, when the New York City public school system banned the display of nativity scenes but allowed the display of what the policy deemed less overtly religious symbols such as Christmas trees, Hanukkah menorahs, and the Muslim star and crescent. The school system successfully defended its policy in Skoros versus City of New York 2006. Okay. So, okay, here's my comment. Yep. There you go. <laughs> yeah, um... One of the things about the uh, the Donald Trump presidency that's been so fascinating is the last couple years. I mean, I mean, you know, when he won the election in 2016, I remember uh, members of my family actually saying, yeah, you know, it's just it's already feels better saying Merry Christmas, <laughs> which I, I just I don't know, man. I really do feel that this is a it's a fantasy that people live in or a delusion. Um, so wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Wait. They felt weird saying Merry Christmas? Apparently they felt weird before Trump. Um, Why? I don't know. Um, oh my God. Oh, I can't say two words. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. I just have no, I have no. Yeah. Um, well, like the other thing is though, like, you know, I, I'm in Mount Sinai for my uh, for my internship for music therapy, and we went around, um, you know, some point last week, and we we went to all the departments, and we sang Christmas carols, and we sang, uh, you know, some Hanukkah songs, we sang Kwanzaa songs, and it really like nobody was bothered by any of it, uh, and we said Happy Holidays. We also said Merry Christmas. Like, it literally, yeah. nobody was bothered by any of it. Yeah, I, you know, the thing is funny is, like, I don't say a Merry Christmas every time, but mm -hmm. I do say it. Mm -hmm. I, well, here's the deal is, like, Dorian, this is a perfect example of a group of people who are used to having hegemony. Seeing it as a, as noticing this is a particular place in which it isn't ubiquitous anymore. And now mm -hmm. that I have to think about it, that means that I'm in danger because I can't always say the thing I want to say in these situations, even though I should, I, even though I probably never feel really bad about having, being able to say it because you can always say it. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there a, is there a time in which you shouldn't say it? I mean, I can't, I don't think that there's like a verboten aspect to saying Merry Christmas at certain times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, other than like, you probably shouldn't say Merry Christmas in March. Yeah, like like a timing issue, but yeah, yeah, I, I don't see. But that's just know. a faux pas. That's not like I don't know. Oh my god! Yeah. I mean, there there it's sort of like the the all this stuff about Christmas is like they're acting as if it's somehow become like a a slur. Yeah, and it's clearly not. Right. Because guess what? You can still say Merry Christmas on television. Right. I mean, there's still Christmas Nobody bleeps specials. it. <laughs> Nobody bleeps when you say it. Right? Right. Everyone can still watch Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer multiple times on television. They're still going to show that stupid Jimmy Stewart movie. What's it called? Um, it's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, that one. Yes. The one where you always wish that he actually does jump off the bridge. Um... <laughs> The um, or you know, or the 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 
the one that's got Burl Ives as the snowman. That's the that's Rudolph. Rudolph. There's, yeah. Rudolph the Resonance Ranger. There's the Frosty the Snowman one. There's all the, there's the, you know, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas. I mean, there are all these things. Mm-hmm. They still show up if you watch television. But again, we have YouTube. And it's like everybody's got like hell. Even we're fucking doing a holiday themed episode where we're talking about Christmas. Yeah, we're crying fucking out loud. You have they have all the power, and they're complaining. Yeah, so I well, just they don't went, have as much. That's just the went into uh, Netflix, um, and I'm going to the movies. Going under holidays, we're gonna name the movies that are listed in here. Oh boy. First one, White Christmas. <laughs> yep. It's a very White Christmas for many, in very, in, for many reasons. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Grinch Who Stole... How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kung Fu Panda Holiday... Uh, Kung Fu Panda Holiday, Christmas Chronicles. Home for Christmas, the Grinch, apparently a newer version. Um Oh, popular on Netflix, Christmas with the Cranks, which is starring uh, uh, Tim Allen, who is supposedly being ostracized for being a Republican in Hollywood, according to him. Um, Oh, sure. Even though he's apparently in the most popular uh, streaming Christmas special on Netflix right now. Um, Angela's Christmas, Let It Snow, Elliot, The Littlest Reindeer? I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, Oh, there's a nature documentary, Holiday in the Wild. Uh, There's a Christmas Prince. Uh, I'm going to just keep moving down. Uh, So just so you know, there have only been three so far that didn't somehow seem like a Christmas thing directly. Mm -hmm. Okay, Netflix Originals, because, you know, this is modern stuff. So these would be the people really hardcore going against, uh, you know, the war on Christmas. So Netflix Originals. Klaus, the movie that I just, I I know it's Klaus because I just watched it yesterday. I watched it yesterday. <laughs> so just to... <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, so Klaus, uh, Christmas Chronicles, Sugar Rush, Cr- Rush Christmas, Nailed It Holidays, The Night Before Christmas, Holiday in the Wild, A Christmas Prince, Merry, Happy, Whatever. <laughs> Atlas Shrugged. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let It Snow, Angela's Christmas, A Christmas Prince, Holiday Rush, Three Days of Christmas, The C- Princess Switch, Bad home, Santa. Home for Christmas. Um, How many Christmas Bad Santa Prince two is there? Like I feel like I've read that a lot of times. Well, whatever. it's okay. Well, you um, you've read from different column, different yeah. rows, right? So the yeah, movies yeah, yeah, will yeah. show up in both of them, right? Well, holiday calendar, Christmas inheritance, holiday secrets, Christmas with my father. Mm, um, sounds like there's a lot of Christmas stuff. Yeah, El Camino Christmas. Family Reunion Christmas, A Story Bots Christmas, Super Monsters Save Christmas, Spirit Riding Free, Spirit of Christmas, Home for the Holidays, True Winter Wishes. Yeah, this is all pretty Christmas. Oh, yeah. So uh, did you know that? So that, that's oh, the A Very Murray Christmas, the Bill Murray Christmas special. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Bill Murray. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's a there's a lot lot of Christmas specials. Um, I I wonder why. Yeah. No, I don't. Okay. So uh, anyway, yeah. So it's the so so you're telling me that the war on Christmas is a right wing propaganda machine in order to stoke up the culture war in order to divide the American people against itself. <clears throat> yes. Oh my God. Yes, that, that's that's exactly. Um, what, 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 uh, I would be feeling. Yeah. So it's, um, so, um, so we're giving, so, so here's my question. What, is there anything we can do or is this just the thing? I mean, it's clearly ginned up garbage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's like. Take Pizza Gate and take it down five notches, or QAnon or something, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you get this. So what? I mean, is there any way to convince anybody that nobody gives a shit? I mean, like we don't give a shit, and we're talking about it for twenty minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's like, is is there? 
is this just a rift that's there and this is the thing that they're choosing to exploit it with by taking the thing that they think of as their most cherished personal possession, Christmas? Right? Because we even cherish Christmas as people who don't believe in God. Right. Or and capitalism. to them, <laughs> right? Or capitalism, right? And they... And they would think of us still liking Christmas, even though we hate both of those things, which some of them might also hate capitalism for different reasons. Mm-hmm. The that the commercialism of the holiday, that is. So what I mean, they would view it as as a part of the downfall of our society that you and I still like Christmas, but think it or think of it as having nothing to do with God. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So like even the, even us having a conversation with other people about something like this is not going to mm-hmm. like I don't know assuage them. Yeah. So I've got this. Uh, I was still just kind of scanning down the Christmas controversies. Uh, sure. The, the, this one. Um, I've got two things to actually read in here, but <clears throat> in November 2015. The coffee shop chain Starbucks oh, introduced. Yeah, this, you remember yeah. this one? Yeah. Um, can, can we summarize? They yeah, well, put they put out some red, uh, red cups, cups that didn't say "Merry Christmas" on them. That's what they did. They put yeah. out some fucking red cups. Who cares? Yeah. So and it was a huge thing. So let, let me just read this whole thing uh, because there's something in here that just kind of blew my mind. Go ahead. Um, so November 2015, the coffee shop chain Starbucks introduced Christmas themed colored, colored in solid red and containing no ornamentation besides the Starbucks logo contrasting previous designs, which featured winter related imagery and non-rela- non-religious Christmas symbols such as reindeer and ornaments. <clears throat> On November, on 5 November, a video was posted on Facebook by evangelist and self-proclaimed social media personality, Jeff Fierstein. In which self-proclaimed. He accused, that's yes. nice. That's uh, a nice little bit there. In which he accused Starbucks of hating Jesus by removing Christmas-oriented imagery from the cup, uh, followed by him tricking a barista into writing Merry Christmas on the cup and encouraging others to do the same. The video By the became... way, can I, can I interject here? Mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. Um, as a person, um, whoever that person writing this who thinks that Starbucks hated Jesus, mm-hmm. um, I also hate whoever that person thinks Jesus is because <laughs> that person isn't Jesus. Right. Go ahead. Um, uh, the video became a viral video sp- spurring discussions and commentary. Businessman and Republican 2016 president candidate, later elected, Donald Trump supported <laughs> Fierstein's claim by suggesting a boycott of Starbucks, saying that if I become president, we're all going to be saying Merry Christmas again. Many social media users, including other Christians, perceived the criticism to be an overreaction. In contrast to the controversy, the color red had been associated with Christmas since at least the 19th century and is often present in Christmas decorations and Christian services. See, the problem but, is the Soviets like the color red, too, so that's the problem, right? They're, the they're communists. The Starbucks is around. communists. The They're Marxist-Leninists. They want us all to die for because of capitalism. Um, also, in 2015, Resolution 564 received 36 sponsors, including Doug Lamborn, to assert Christmas in public. Newt Gingrich's stance of defense against the supposed war of Christmas, Christmas resonated in popular culture for years. So this is what the part that blew my mind. Do you know who Joshua Fierstein is? No. So... I, he, he's, I've followed him for years and okay. he's like a kind of a psycho, like evangelical person. Um, Go but, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, I just like was hovering over his name because I didn't realize, like I, I thought he was a person that only people like me knew. Um, mm. But then it was like, okay, like he's, he's big enough to have a Wikipedia page now. Um mm. Uh, but the very first sentence, I'm a little, I need to look into this, but it says, Joshua Fierstein, born January 7th, 1981, is an American, is an American Jew who poses as an evangelical, 
evangelical internet personality in an attempt to make conservative Christians look bad? What? Oh my god. What? Okay, so this just just took a gigantic left turn. Yeah, yeah, like that's Share that's, this in the share this in the show notes so I can look at this. Yeah, well, I just want to find out if this is like some alt-right trolling. Um It could be. Like the wiki it's wikipedia right this yes is how you... yes that because th- this just it doesn't this guy's either like such a genius <laughs> like troll that um that i'm 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 impressed honestly uh or this is something that got uh okay Is he is he real? Like, <laughs> so where where's? Oh, okay. So I'm looking the at the very opening. Here. So well, here's the deal: is did you notice at the bottom of the page that it says that he did a debate, something about a debate with Greta Thunberg? Yeah, on twenty September twenty fourth, two thousand nineteen. Christian posted a challenge to young climate change activists via his Facebook account stating that he would like to formally offer a hundred thousand donations to a charity hundred thousand dollars of donation to a charity of your choice if you're willing to engage in an hour long televised debate with me, adding, Who wants to see this? The post is shared over two thousand times and drew Okay, so we can supporters. find out so what we can do is we can find out so there's a we can view the edit history of this page. Yeah, yeah. So let's see. Let's see if we can find the. Um, so how do you view the old versions? Okay, there we go. Okay, you got it. Um, so that was recently changed. That was literally changed. Um, Dorian, that was changed as of yesterday at at noon. Okay. So it used to read, "Is an American evangelical internet personality," and now it says, "Is an American Jew who poses in it." As an internet, internet attempt to make conservative Christians look bad. Yeah, I have a feeling that's an alt right troll. So you've 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 somehow, Dorian, we have we have literally <laughs> happened upon a very specific right wing modification of the internet that's happened in the past day and a half. That hasn't gotten caught yet, because it usually takes uh well, like it, you know, I, I've I've changed I changed something once about North Canton, Ohio, um, as a joke, and it got fixed within within you know a day, uh, like it was taken out. Um, basically, short version. I, I put uh, it was like notable locals, and I added my father, and I um I, yeah. I wrote, so Dorian, so this yeah. is they, apparently people have changed these things regularly. So in October. Someone tried to add the for posting videos on social media where he came out as a racist rapist. That was added in October, and a minute later, that was deleted. Oh my god! Yeah, so you might want to like. Um, should probably. Um, can we like um, report that? <laughs> yeah. Or you can change it if you want. Yeah. Um... Oh wow, that is. I cannot believe we found this. Right, wow. Well, there you go. So, so so here's the deal, Dorian, is that we 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 make a we make a show about that is in some sense in an attempt to counteract white ring nut jobs. Yeah. And we've literally found it in real time. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, happy Festivus every Oh wait, here we go. It's a Festivus miracle. Oh, my oh God. God! So, yeah. so, um, so, um, just um, anybody, if you ever act, if there are the the seven people who might listen to this, um, 
that may not be true, but you can go check in the view history section and on the 18th and the 19th, you can see the, the, the change made on the, made on the 18th to make it say that he's a, uh, make it say he's a Jew. Posing, uh, Posing as an evangelical, as a, Christian, evangelical to, Christian to make them look which, bad. Which, by the way, hmm, hmm, gross anti-Semitism on the internet. I can't well, believe it's real. I mean, the <laughs> the thing, the reason I'm assuming this is an alt-right troll is oh, if course. you ever go down those uh, those holes, you know, they always talk about, you know, they probably look at Fierstein. Think about it, you know. Right, um, exactly. It's just like, it's... It's not like the word Stein just means stone in German. Mm -hmm. So it's not like everybody named gold isn't a Jew. They're not Jewish. All of them aren't Jewish. Yeah. 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 Anyway, why does it fucking matter? Ugh. That's that's the thing, right? Th this is all bound up with this war on Christmas shit, right? So it's yes. like... So you're... it's. It's not only is that is that guy some stupid right wing idiot. It's that there are people to the right of him that are trying to slam him as being uh, some racial, um, uh, uh, being in some racial category that makes them suspect. This I mean, is insane. I mean, you you know how I, uh, you know, conspiratorial people can be, but they're are actually people who are further to the right than Andrew Anglin of the Daily Stormer. Well, of course. Who are convinced that Andrew Anglin is actually a government spy trying to make Nazis look bad. Yes. Oh, so Dorian, you know, there are people who... I found people on the internet, on the left, who reacted who believe that noam chomsky is himself you should take the the um the fred uh, his and ed herman's book uh remind me what's that called again uh is that manufacturing consent yeah manufacture so you should take the frame of manufacturing consent and you should use it to criticize left-wing media and noam chomsky himself and thereby prove that noam chomsky himself is also an aspect of the propaganda system that up upholds those in power. Wow. And I just was like, and someone literally asked him that. It's like, I, I saw something where it's like, well, Ch no, no, aren't you also, shouldn't we use that frame to analyze you? And he's like, well, no, I mean, it's about this, like how, if you apply this, I'm not a, I'm not a media person. <laughs> I'm like I'm not. Even, I'm not a journalist. I'm not a. I don't run a media organization. He's just a, mm -hmm. a linguist and a dissident, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the the idea that there's some that now keep in mind. Uh, Noam Chomsky is uh, uh, eleven times uh, better, at least. Uh, that's underselling it than what that England guy you're referring to. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, not nearly as far left as that guy is far right. Yes. Because um, I know people who are left of Chomsky. But that doesn't mean that <laughs> you, you try to undermine Chomsky with his own theory of how the media works. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, you can disagree with him. Mm -hmm. But the idea that somehow the democracy now or... Or you know Chomsky, or you know the 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 left wing independent media, is somehow also captured by the state. I mean, just... I had a friend who wrote a blog post once, and I shared it on a Facebook page, and got accused that CNN was sponsoring this this blog, and I told my friend. Uh, I was like, dude, like apparently CNN is is uh, is sponsoring you, and he was like, really? Like, where where's that money? Um, well, well, you know, there's there's a common criticism of Chomsky that because he worked at because he worked at MIT, which was mainly funded when he was started his job, uh, by and his own research was funded by the Pentagon, mm -hmm. because his research into how languages work, um. 
has something to do with, I don't know, state violence. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's just like, what? What? That he somehow Chomsky himself is somehow tainted by being a professor at MIT. Right. It's just sort of like, what? Have you seen this? People uh, say this I, I haven't. I haven't looked that far into it, but I'm not surprised that it exists. Well, you know, just um, just going down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theorists, um, mm-hmm. uh, as you as you like to do. Um, I remember when I was looking. So one of the things I do when I find a media source is I try to identify. I, I try to type whatever it is, and then sucks into Google to see who's complaining about it. Mm. Um, just so I know what other people are saying. Just so I know. So I, I did that once with Democracy Now! or Amy Goodman. And I found 9-11 truthers from on the left because there are leftist people. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys is like somebody who literally would give money to Democracy Now! like at, like KPFA or whatever, the one in California or something. And he was, and he would go, like, um, she wouldn't, like, talk to him about the truth behind 9-11. So he, like, went to her, like, an event she was doing and brought a camera. Mm. And he showed up with that, you know, that paper that some, some, quote, scientists got published in a bullshit journal about how, um, whatever the, the... The the how the metal wouldn't have broken well, down the yeah particular yeah, yeah. the, it's the a very steel famous beams paper, the steel right? beams that yes yeah. that so it's a very famous <laughs> bullshit scientific paper that got published in a bullshit scientific journal and he like walks in with it and wants to give it to her and she's and she like literally says in the video to him he's like oh you remember me and he says she looks at him straight in the eye and says I know who you are <laughs> and and he's like. Well, they don't just do this. It's like, well, you're not going to look. I'd love to sit down and talk with you about this. It's like, well, we're not, not going to do that. And it's like, well, why not? Yeah. It's like, yeah, no, um, and then they just have to kind of shepherd him away mm-hmm. because it's like, I mean, you literally can't. There's a certain level of conspiracy theory that the only way that a, pe- a person like that can react to them is by, okay. Yeah, you're going to say that. No, I don't need to learn any more about that. Right. Um, I don't think that's real. And you can't, and there's no way to, there's no way to have an argument with them that disproves or like that says that it's like, well, I don't believe your, ev- your evidence isn't real. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's like, because, you know, the, the left is a, is a wonderful place for conspiracy theories, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, is, which I think is the most important thing about Chomsky's frame about the media. It's, it's not about a conspiracy. It's not about people choosing to say, okay, well, we're going we're gonna to throw the media for the rich because, man, the rich are better than everybody else and fuck everyone, right? It's not about conspiratorial thinking, even among the rich. It's this is what humans do. And they do this without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And because this is where the money is and people make these kind of sociological decisions, this is the kind of media that results. Mm -hmm. And this is how that media coverage ends up being basically like Pravda. You know, uh, where you're, it's just like, well, what would a state run, the state run media do? The state-run media would say that the government was always doing things wonderful. Okay, well, what are the limits of the criticisms that American media has of the state that's owned by corporations, Mm. right? Both the media and the state, of course. And so we don't have a state, we don't have state media, although Fox News has gotten pretty damn close lately. It's It's that the media we have... Under, underlines and highlights American power because it is owned by the same people and the people like us, Dorian, who mm-hmm. would be people that would not agree with the frame of, say, the New York Times about what's going on, say, in, I don't know, Rojava, um, Assyria, that, yeah. they, that they would... that. Th- they set up the system. The system is set up in such a way that people like us who are journalists mm-hmm. don't get those jobs. Mm-hmm. And if they do, they're not allowed to say those things. Right. Not because anyone's saying don't say these things. There might be a few people along the way. It's just that the people who get, the people who get promotions 
are the people who say the other things. Right. Like Brian Williams, who, who's like, I'm thinking about Leonard Cohen, and, and the, I'm guided by the light of our missiles, or whatever the fuck thing he said about that stupid missile attack that Donald Trump ordered. Right. right? So it's like this whole bullshit. So it's this... It's it's the it's all based on the fact that humans are nobody is sitting in a room and going hey why don't we fuck these people I mean there are people doing that mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. not a conspiracy and that anyone's hiding it from anybody it's mostly people just doing things because they need to right and that creates the situation where you're gonna bomb the shit out of some other country because apparently something about American values. Whatever that fucking means. Yeah, bomb, 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 democracy, bomb. Right, right, right. You know, um, what, what, is, what did, what did uh, McCain say? Bomb, 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 Iran. That's what he said, right? Did he really what? say that? Yeah, you didn't know about that? Or, or the fact that, like, when on six... Look, I can't believe that this wasn't a bigger thing. In the 1990s, when Madeleine Albright was the Secretary of State, and we were bombing Iraq for the second time, you know, when Clinton was president. Mm -hmm. Do you remember all that stuff with Iraq in the late 90s? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The I mean, that's what the outcast song Bombs Over Baghdad is about, I believe. Right, so so it's the... So Leslie Stahl literally asks her, the sanctions and the stuff we're doing in Iraq have... have the the, the, the um, uh, in Amnesty International or somebody is saying that this has killed like half a million children in Iraq. Is it worth it? And she says, is it hard? Yes. But is it worth it? Yes, I think so. Right? Some, she says something like that. So Madeleine Albright, in the calculations of power and what she views as American security and what she thinks that the American state needs her to say because she rec re represents the state on television at the time, needed her to say that it was the right thing to do to 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 murder a half a million children wow <laughs> i might have the number wrong but it's a large number of like just like starving people or bombing them or something it's just like so it's it's is madeline albright herself like doing something amoral yes but not in the system that she's set up in, that we've all some sort of somehow ended up in, right? The ones that we don't have any power in and that she did and then didn't use it to do better things, making her a war criminal. Here you go. I use, I use the, the word of the day, war criminal. Okay. So check this out. Um, one, two, one, two, three, yeah. In slum national underground, thunder pounds when I stomp the ground. Like a million elephants in a silverback orangutan, you can't stop a train. Who wants some? Don't come unprepared. I'll be there, but when I leave there, better be a household name. Weatherman telling us that it ain't gonna rain. Now, uh, So now we sitting to the drop top, soaking wet, in a silk suit trying not to sweat, hit somersault without the net, but this this will be the year that we won't forget. One nine nine nine, anno domino. Anything goes, but what you want to do? Long as you know consequences, to give and for living. The fence is too high to jump in jail. Too low to dig. I might just touch hell. Hot. Got a let. Got a ah. Sorry. Get a life. Now they on sale. Then I might cast you a spell and okay and look at what came in the mail. A scale with some arm and hammer. So uh. Soul Gold Grill and some Baby Mama. Black Cadillac and a pack of Pampers. Stack of question with no answers. Cure for answer. Cure for AIDS. Make a blank. Want to stay on tour for days. Get back home. Things are wrong. Well, not really. It was bad all along. Before he left ads up to a ball of power. Thoughts at a thousand miles per hour. Hello, ghetto. Let that brain breathe. Be believe there's always more. Ah. And so... Wow. I'm just trying to see. This is... this. Um... So you're looking for the... Are you looking for specific lyrics in the song? Or... No, I'm just reading through them. Uh... Yeah. So I put a... I put the... I put a link to the... Um, 
to the video of that particular set of questions on mm -hmm, 60 Minutes mm -hmm. in the show notes. So you'll be anybody who's listening to this, you'll be able to watch Madeleine Albright say her morally challenged thing. This woman, by the way, has been going around for the past couple of years uh, pumping a, uh, a book about how we need to be worried about fascism. It's like, because capitalist American imperialist democracy is great. Fascism's worse by a long shot. But what we got's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Man, oh man. Um, you know, because that's what I want. I want the 90s back. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Let's go forward, please. Yeah, exactly. Forward. Well, um, I guess uh, uh, one last subject matter to cover. Um, what are your thoughts on Festivus, David? Here, let me let oh. me put it this way, actually. So it's a very funny episode of Seinfeld. Yeah, David and I are huge fans of Festivus, and we were doing some research on it a few days ago, and I think that uh, my favorite part of Festivus that I learned about uh, is called the Festivus Clock, and so mm -hmm. ba basically, Festivus was actually celebrated. Um, by one of the writers uh, of Seinfeld, his father had come up with it. Uh, um, so uh, yeah, Dan O'Keefe was the was the the man who created um, Festivus for his family, and then it ended up being used by his son um, in the episode called "The Strike." But anyways, um, in a 2013 CNN segment on the origins of Festivus, O'Keefe spoke about the real-life experiences related to the holiday. O'Keefe's father, who originated some of the now-recognized Festivus traditions, used a clock in a bag nailed to a wall, not an aluminum pole. It was never the same bag, rarely the same clock, but always the same wall. The nailing was most often done in secret and then revealed proudly to his family. The younger O'Keefe told CNN, The real symbol of the holiday was a clock that my dad put in a bag and nailed to the wall every year. I don't know why. I don't know what it means. He would never tell me. He'd always say, That's not for you to know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that yeah. concludes our holiday special. <laughs> so, thank so you all. You, you yeah. yeah. Well, you heard you heard a you heard a, a, a festivist themed thing at the front. There'll also be one at the back here. Yeah, so yeah. Listen in for the other musical tidbit we came up with. Yep. So, all right, y'all. Well, have a happy festivus. We're Tristeropod. My name is Dorian Wallace. This is my friend and colleague uh, David Coma. We'll see you next time. Peace. A festivus for the rest of us. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in Jesus, Lord, at
Jesus, Lord, 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 Jesus, Lord,